What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker. I'm Eric Heaney. And today on The Great Debaters, we're taking it to the West Side, y'all. West Side Connection. Get ready. Alright Amir, so today for The Great Debaters we're talking about West Side Connection's Bow Down song from the Bow Down album, both of which came out in 1996, and who has the best verse on the song and why. So obviously West Side Connection had been recording prior to the release of both the song Bow Down and the album Bow Down on Mac 10 projects and different things. and we get to hear them now as a full group and the first entree of that is the Bow Down song. So there had been a lot of animosity of, of course between artists from the East and West Coast. Unfortunately it led to a lot of violence and a lot of problems but on the flip side of that there was also as of 1996 there had been a number of amazing collaborations throughout the years with Bigger and Deffer by LL Cool J being the first major one, uh, if not the first one, period, having the LA Posse produce that. Then we get into Ice Cube with America's Most Wanted, of course, collaborating with the Bomb Squad. And there's so many more throughout history, those being, I, I would argue, the two most prominent and the two best, probably. And especially on the album front. But, and there's many other examples that we can get to because we'll probably debate some other ones later, so mm -hmm. I don't want to get too off into that. But, before Bow Down, it came at an important time when gangster rap was under fire. Gangster rap hadn't uh, had the same luster. We had a lot of things going on with Death Row. We had a lot of, you know, people were upset or misinterpreted. I used to love her by Common. We just had a lot of stuff that was going on. The East Coast, West Coast, the so-called East Coast, West Coast beef was alive and well, unfortunately. And then we get Bow Down coming out in 96. And Ice Cube kicks off the song in there. Your boy. So, tell me about your thoughts on Ice Cube's verse from Bow Down. The legend. Um, so, you know, I always have to start off like this anyways. The, the intro before World Domination ins insert. Yes. I love how it leads right into Bow Down, how, you know, you get the view and everything. and. That's why the very first second you hear Ice Cube say, the world is mine, get back, don't mess with my stack, the gate is racked. As we talked about on so many other videos that we've had, almost probably every video, Ice Cube just knows how to start a song, man. <laughs> he does. I'm, I'm going to keep saying it. He does. He's so good. Um, I love his force on this. And to be honest with you, hearing his catalog with Lethal Injection being his uh, last solo album, it was 93. We had, obviously, a few releases here and there, and we had heard them collab with a bunch of artists, and, and even the Natural One Killers, which was amazing, in 95, or 94. Um, I just was so happy to hear Icy on a full-length project, and to him come with this ferocity and this anger and this direction. Uh, granted, Storm was talking about the East and the West, really the LA and the New York kind of deal uh i thought it was very clever and this was also before all the the tupac stuff as well so this was a just super awesome song or lyrics by ice cube i should say and then i actually also wanted to ask you i know how big the song is now but when this dropped was this a big song oh, yeah. across the across the u.s or was this just like in la yeah i was living in maryland song? at the time and it wasn't necessarily popular in Maryland, but West Side Connection was big in Chicago, for instance, and throughout the South in different, re in different markets because a lot of people on the fan level, I think, identified with what West Side Connection represented, which was our music isn't getting appreciated by the gatekeepers in New York. And that was basically everyone except people in New York felt that way about New York and really had since the 80s and with good reason because bluntly a lot of the people in New York whether in the magazines or on the radio which the West Side Connection address elsewhere on the album they didn't support the music in the way that the people from other regions supported New York music and that's just a fact and it's you know it's unfortunate reality but that 
helped lead to what West Side Connection was, what they represented, and then what they addressed not only on the Bow Down song, but throughout the Bow Down album. And, you know, Ice Cube, of course, being a early trailblazer and one of the best, if not the best, West Coast artists of all time, you know, he's a key guy to help lead the charge, so to say. And I think on the first verse, you know, he comes down like a sledgehammer, man. <laughs> <laughs> he he definitely does do that, man, and I'm I'm happy you you mentioned that too about because when I heard this, I didn't really notice it. To, I didn't think it would be a huge single. I just didn't think it was. I personally, think it's catchy, but it's not something that I would guess that the masses would think is catchy. That's why I kind of had to ask that question. Um, but anyways, Mac 10's verse is up next, and Mac 10, I really liked his debut album. So I'm happy he was uh, uh, an honorary member, as he says, the Inglewood edition to the West Side Connection, connecting with South Central. Mac 10's clever. Mac 10's talking a lot about uh, West Coast. He's talking about Lolo's, Corniche's, baguettes in my pieces. I love that line. He's, he's talking about the uh, the jewelry, the guns, the the cars, the real like West Coast image. He's throwing it on you, whereas Ice Cube is kind of saying we the we the big fish in the small pond, and right. and we're this, you know, these these big guys, and I think Mac Ten kind of puts a different spin on it and does it very impressively. There you go, well put, and you know, moving on to Dub C, who finishes the song, you know, he has his little jingle that he had become mm -hmm. famous for, very well known for, connect gang, D gang, all that type of stuff. <laughs> so. That I think was good for him to, uh, you know, bring in, and then he, I would argue, more than the other two, really includes by some of his lyrics a lot more of the actual gang stuff, which, uh, you know, if you know what he's talking about, is is clever and interesting the way that he does that. Um, so I think all three of them brought a different element to it, and I think that's why West Side Connection on both their albums works so well and was so powerful because they are very different artists, even though they're very much related to one another directly and indirectly. And I think that Bow Down gets that. And I think, too, they're very different in their, I would say, Dub C and Ice Cube are more similar lyrically and what they discuss than MAC-10 is, but they're all in the same neighborhood as far as what they talk about, how they talk about it, and, you know, MAC-10, I would argue, not argue, MAC-10 is more flashy with the the flash of gangsterism than either Q or Dub C is, but MAC-10 definitely brings a lot of the street stories and the uh, uh, you know, throughout different songs throughout his career has brought a lot of reflection into what's going on. So anyway, I think that they all did a great job and brought their different respective elements to the song for Bow Down. So that being said, that's what I think. Amir, who's the best verse on Bow Down and why? I'm going Ice Cube. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Honestly, man, the way he starts it is just, it's too good. And just his, I think, one thing I notice on the album is he starts a lot of the songs off. Not all of them, but most of them he starts off. And I'm happy he does because he just gets the energy very right for the track. I think his lines are impressive. I think especially in 1996, um, to drop a verse like this, especially kind of after he hadn't dropped a full-length album in some time, I think this was definitely a statement. I also really like, uh, in addition to his verse, I love uh, what he says at the end of the song. And it's even not even the West Coast, even when you're on the west side of your town, yeah. you get people to bow down to you. I just think it's just so funny. And But he's just like, you know, like respect the West. And, and I'm going with Ice Cube on this one. What about you? I'm going to disagree, mm -hmm. and I'm going with Dub C. Okay. Because I think Dub C, more than the other two, had a lot more cleverness and a lot more, his was just, I think, more creative by spelling stuff out, by the inflection in his voice, by changing the speed and the delivery and all that, I think more than Cube or Mac did. And I think his just is more of um, the specificness of the West Coast in a way that was just a deeper dive into 
the lifestyle into the lyrics and into the imagery and I think he did it in my opinion the best on the song but that's what I think that's what Amir thinks what do you guys think who has the best verse on Westside Connections Bow Down song and why. Be sure to hit us up in the comment section and like, subscribe, and share to both Unique Access and Rapping and Snacking. And we'll hit you back in the comments or the good people at Unique Access will. We appreciate you guys' support. We'll be back at you next time on the Great Debaters, but hit us up, let you know what you think. Westside Connection. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your MTV basketball? Your MTV is just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.